Hello Year 8 and welcome to today's demo um, on how to make a model of one of your initial ideas. So that by the end of this video and over the course of two lessons you will have created something similar but hopefully better than what I've got in front of you. Okay so first things first is we need to make sure that you've got a piece of cardboard preferably A4 size, an eraser, a pencil, some scissors, some tape or glue or whatever you've got to put your materials together. Also, if you haven't got cardboard, you can use card or paper. So, and a ruler. Okay, so I've got my steel rule, but you need a ruler that's um, at least 150 millimeters. Yeah, so it's that length there, or 15 centimetres. So something like this would be too small. So pause the video now and gather this equipment, as well as a copy of your initial ideas. Right, so now that we've got our equipment together, you now need your piece of material, so card, paper or cardboard, a pencil, an eraser, and your ruler. So, just a recap on how we measure. So I'm going to be using millimetres when I talk about dimensions. And this ruler's upside down. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about millimetres. So this is when your ruler has 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. on it. If your ruler has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it means your ruler is in centimetres. For every 10 millimetres is one centimetre. So when you hear me talk about millimetres, just take off one zero and that will be your correct dimension. Remember, when we start marking out, we need to start at zero. So on a steel rule like mine, you probably use this in school, zero is at the edge of the point. However, on a normal plastic ruler, zero is actually a few millimetres in. It is the first line that you've got after the edge. So we have the edge of the ruler and zero is the first line afterwards. All right, so now we know that when we mark out, we start with zero. Now, get your piece of cardboard and try and find a point which is two straight parts, okay? So I've got a straight part here. I can just cut those off later. The reason why we're going to use the corner of our cardboard is to avoid wastage. It means that we'll be able to fit more components onto this piece than if we did our main drawing in the middle. Okay, so first I want you to find the edge. I'm just going to cut straight. Right, so first we find the edge. I'll just cut it off quickly. We're going to have the zero end of our ruler. I'll do this upside down so you can see. Zero end of our ruler along the edge of our cardboard and then I want you to mark out a hundred millimeters okay so we've got zero and then we're going to get to a hundred millimeters yep then you're going to go along the other side of your cardboard and you're going to measure out a hundred and fifty millimeters yeah so if you're doing it upside down like me you'll see you use a hundred and fifty be on the edge and then you'll make your little mark where zero is I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can see it a little bit better. So I've got my first 100 point, and now I'm going to do it again. So, along this bit, I'm going to put line up my zero with that mark I made. And then I'm going to mark at 100. And then going to line it up with the other edge that I did and make sure that that is 150. So that's zero. And you can see that 150, I make a mark. Yeah. So when you're happy with the placement of your points, you can then use your ruler and your pencil to make, join these dots making a straight line. 
So, oh, the camera's all over the place. Sorry, guys. Go place our pencil and our mark. We're going to put our ruler against that pencil, and then we're going to line up that ruler against the second mark, and then track. This is another reason why we will line up our shape against the outside of the material because I've only had to draw two lines and I know that these two will already be cut straight. So now that you've got your lines drawn out, you've got your rectangle, I want you to draw another rectangle of the same size. So I want you to draw another rectangle which is 100 millimeters by 150 millimeters. And I've just realized that's upside down. Yeah, so I want you to draw another rectangle that's 150 by 100 millimeters. Now, if you've got some wood, um, wood, if you've got some cardboard like mine, I'm going to draw it here because then it will avoid wasting my cardboard further. Take a moment now to draw a second rectangle next to the first one that you did of the same size. So, as you can see, I've now got one rectangle that's 150 by 100 mil, and another rectangle that's 150 by 100 mil. And now I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut along those lines that I've just drawn. There, so now I've got two rectangles that are the same size. Okay, so what we're actually creating today is a prototype. So, a prototype is something that is realistic. So for us, we're actually going to make ours life size. What we've got here with our two rectangles is the base of our base, the basic version of our base, as well as the same bit here we go, of the spine of the clock. Okay, So this is our foundation that we get to work with today. So first, put your base to one side. They're both exactly the same, so just choose now. Right, that's my base, and then we're going to draw out our initial design. So, remember what we're doing is we're creating a model of one of our initial designs. So if you haven't already, take a moment now to pick your favourite. If you missed the initial design lesson, then you're welcome to copy my design, or you can grab your mood board, or just images of Art Deco clocks, and choose one of those to make instead. So I'm going to go something similar to what I showed you at the beginning of this video. It's quite a nice art deco design. So I'm going to use as much of my cardboard as possible. So I'm going to keep the exact same width. I then want to do like a nice little edge bit going down so it's thinner at the bottom. Okay. I don't like how thin that is so I'm going to make that a bit bigger. I'm actually going to bring my ruler out and measure that. Okay, so I'll probably bring it about here, which is 30 mil in, and then another 30 mil in from the other side. So, first things first, I want you to sketch out, so remember, rough lines, rough pencil lines. I want to sketch out what design you want. You can do something like triangle like that. You could draw steps. To mimic architecture. Yeah, you can't really see it so well. So basically, I've sketched this out on the cardboard. You could do circles. I had a really interesting design that looked like. Oh, wrong card. I had someone who did a design. It was almost like an hourglass. Okay, so what you're doing is you're sketching out the main body of your chosen initial idea onto this rectangle piece. Okay. If you've got additional bits on the side, you're welcome to add do that on some other cardboard. But for right now, I want you to focus on the main part of your clock and sketch that out on your cardboard. Once you're happy, you then need to use a ruler to straighten out those lines making sure it is symmetrical and by symmetrical I mean the same on both sides if you've had a line down the middle it would be the same on both sides all right so I've done my sketch I've straightened up my lines I've made sure that the shape that I've drawn is symmetrical on my piece of 
um, cardboard. Okay, so now once you're hung completely happy with your shape, you can now cut off any excess cardboard that you may have. Okay, so um, take a moment now, grab your scissors, and we're going to cut off any excess cardboard, okay, away from the shape that we have drawn. It means that you should have something that looks a little bit like that. Okay? So now that we've got our main bit, we can now use some other pieces of cardboard and create some more interesting shapes. So I've actually got this left over from what I've just cut off. So I'm probably going to use these to create some more shapes. In fact, I might flip it upside down and attach them next to my shape like that. Obviously, as you can see, I've got some excess cardboard that I'm going to need to straighten out. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this for those who are copying this exact design because you've missed doing the initial ideas. And the rest of you can go and get some extra cardboard and do some extra designs or shapes to finish recreating your initial ideas. Remember guys, if you are watching this video, it means that you're not timed. So make sure you're keeping an eye on the clock and that you're not running over and late for the next lesson. This is over the course of at least two lessons. You've got time to come back to this if you run out of time. Okay, it's not a race. It's a mar it's not a race. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So take your time and make sure you're getting this right. So one way that I'm making sure this is even using my ruler okay. and I've made a straight line like so okay so now I know that that's going to be completely flat I'm going to get my scissors snip off those two bits if I wanted to I could probably add those two but my design was something that looked like this like so. So pause the video now if you still got if you still want so you can rearrange your shapes, make some extra shapes, etc. When you finish doing that, lay it out on the table in front of you to check that it all goes together and that it's all nice and symmetrical. Okay? You also need to make sure that it actually looks like the initial idea that you've done. Pause the video now while you get to this stage. Okay, you're happy with it, it's laid out and it's symmetrical. Okay, so now that you're happy with the layout, if you've got more than one bit, we need to stick these parts together. Okay, so if you've done like something like this, then realistically you can oh, realistically you can miss this step. But if you have got more than one component to your bit, we're going to need to stick them together. So you can use glue, but honestly, with the clocks, I found tape is much more effective. So I'm going to get some tape. Oh. Apparently fight the tape. And then I'm going to tape it together. Okay, so I can see mine's a little bit excess over, so I'm going to fold it over here, a bit here at the top where I can't do that. Just going to cut that off. Okay, and um, if you want, you can do both sides. Sorry for the noise. Yeah, so then it's nice and secure. Go. and then I'm going to do the other side okay so take a moment now to stick all your components together for your clock okay so by now you should have um, stuck all your pieces together so now you've got this is what your clock face will look like okay I've got my lovely clock I've got my, my lovely spine where um, my clock will go. I've also got some extra pieces to add on to that Art Deco effect. You know, I could probably add an extra two on here, but for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to do that. So, once we're happy with our face, we're now going to move on to the base. 
okay so that little extra bit of cardboard that you had this is actually going to be the base for your clock which I mentioned earlier so for this honestly you can do whatever you want to it but you need to do something okay so you can either sorry I've still got the original lines on there okay so you can do whatever you want to this as long as your clock face fits on it okay so you could just curve the corners you know yeah so then you'll just be snipping off the corners so they're rounded you could make it a circle base let me actually get a proper circle for that yeah we could do a circle base yeah so oh you can't see so it's a circle on there you see that yeah do a circle you could do an oval you could do a diamond you could even do a triangle you can do whatever you want to this base as long as your clock face fits onto it okay so first sketch out what you want to do take your time with this remember light pencil strokes you can rub out any mistakes and then neaten up that line once you've neaten up the line that you've chosen to do you then can grab your scissors and cut that out okay so remember don't just do a random circle on the edge of the cardboard um, in the middle of the cardboard like I did if you are going to do something small keep it to the edge so you're not wasting any pieces of material okay so do your base sketch it outline it cut it okay so now I've got my my clock I've now got my base so there's only two more things that are left to do first you need to measure or find the middle of your spine okay spine's roughly mine should be 100 mil long for some reason so my middle is 50 draw a faint line down the middle and then towards the top preferably 90 millimeters from the bottom only if you can because I forgot to tell you this okay so I'm going to do mine at 120 yeah so 120 and then you should have like a cross like so but straight okay so where the, the two lines meet I want you to press your pencil there okay so you've made an indent and then I want you to carefully like make sure you you know how when you thread a needle not thread a needle when you sew place your pencil into your cardboard oh, it's going pencils coming out in between my fingers yeah we want to get that pencil all the way through so then we've got a lovely hole in our clock okay that's to represent where our clock hands will go when we've finished like so Whoop. yeah so there's clock hands obviously they won't move one's a bit loose okay but that's what that hole represents okay so now that we've done that we now need to attach our main clock to our base okay so but again we're going to do this for sellotape I found that it's not the easiest thing to be fair yeah so get some solid tape make sure it's central to your base okay because um, obviously we don't want it to be all to, the, to, all to one side because remember the key to art deco is to be symmetrical Okay, so that's the back. Okay. okay, so big reveal. Da, 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 da. Sorry, just kids' toys everywhere. Right, there we go. A bit close. So, that is an example of what we want our model to look like, okay? 
Do we still got time at the end of the second lesson, or even the third, depending on how long we do this for? Um, you can um, add some detail to it. So if you're going to add some extra little details or drawings or patterns to it, you're more than welcome to add this as well. Okay, it might be a bit harder with cellar tape, but if you use masking tape, then you'll be able to paint over it or colour over it as well. Okay, if you do have any questions, don't forget to um, email or send a message on ePros to your teacher. Okay, and they'll be happy to help. So thank you for joining this demonstration. I hope that your clock model turns out fantastic. Don't forget to send your progress to your teacher as well. Thank you. Bye.